All right. Hi, Rule Breakers. Hello. Good morning. Say hello as you join. I just want to go in really quickly. I just want to tag everyone in the group here. Let everyone know I'm live. Um, hi. Say hello. We're live. Okay. Awesome. Say hello as you guys join. Um, let me know you're here. Hello. Good morning, Ashley. Hello. All right. Good morning, guys. Um, I'm just pulling up all of my notes. You guys asked like the best questions ever. So I literally um, came up with like notes. Um, Ashley, how do I tag everyone so fast? My assistant Amy does it. <laughs> um, I just pop up, make sure we're live and she goes ahead and tags. So it's super helpful to have someone help, right? Um, okay, I'm just going to turn us over this way a little bit. Um, okay, say hi guys, say hello. We're going to dive in because like I said, I have notes. We have lots of questions. You guys ask so many good questions. So what I want to do is I want to talk about high ticket offers a little bit and then I want to answer all of the questions that you guys posted in the group. Um, <laughs> okay. Sorry, my alarm system just went off for the house. It said, someone is at your front door. Um, it's probably my dog. She's probably out in the sun. Okay, cool. Let's do this. Let's do this because we're not here to talk about Ella, right? Okay. Um, what I want to do first, what I want to say first, and if I kind of go over this way, guys, I'm just looking at notes and I'm checking the screen. Um, here's what I want to do. Say hi as you join. Share this out if you think anyone needs to see it or hear it. Tag them. Um, give me some emotion in the comments. Um, let me know you're excited about this because you guys asked some fantastic questions. Um, I just would not have thought of all of this on my own. So thank you guys for doing that. I want to make sure I meet you guys halfway and answer every question. So, um, I'm going to answer the questions you guys posted in the group right after I talk a little bit about high ticket offers, because I think what I have to share is going to kind of cover a lot of the, the questions you guys already posted. But feel free to post your questions below um, as we kind of go through and I talk about this because um, I'm going to answer every question, okay? So if you have any questions as we go through this, drop them in the comments, okay? Um, good morning, everyone. Hello. Okay, let's do this. Here's what I want to say really quickly before we start talking about high ticket offers. Um, the one thing that I want to say really quickly is one of the things that I do with my clients is we do create a high ticket offer. Okay, um, because I think that this is really, really necessary. Um, Ashley said, I feel like I have been waiting forever. I'm so fucking excited. <laughs> Yay. Me too. I love talking high ticket offers. Um, all right, so let's make sure we blow Ashley's mind and everybody else here today. One of the things I want to say about high ticket offers is that I typically have my clients do a 50-50 ratio. And what that means is we put 50% of our time, energy, on create and fulfill in a high ticket offer. And then we put the other 50% of our energy on a lower ticket offer that is recurrent income. The high ticket offer is going to be where you're gonna work at a really high level for a good amount of money with specific clients. Um, and that money is going to fund the business. It's gonna fund um, creating that low ticket offer, scaling it, um, you know, marketing, all of that stuff. So that high ticket offer that we're talking about today is really about let's get the money rolling in. We need some big chunks of money. We need some high end clients. We need some yeses. We need to get the money in so we can take some of that money, put it back in the business to set you up for recurring long term income. Does that make sense? Okay. So what I really want you to be hearing here is I don't want you to just focus on one or the other. I want you all right now after this training today to go out and I want you to sell and fill your high ticket offer because you're going to have what you need to do that after this training. But at the same time, I want you to be following what I teach inside the Profitable Entrepreneur, which is our 12 week membership. Um, right now, actually guys, it's on beta for $4.50 a month. Um, and you get access to live um, coaching calls with me right inside the Facebook group two, three times a week. Fantastic, okay? That is my recurrent offer. So we'll talk a little bit about this so that you guys can see what this looks like. 
But what I want you to be doing is following my social selling, which is what I teach inside the Profitable Entrepreneur, where you are building up no like and trust, you're building up that engagement, you're really priming people for your recurrent offer. Because I want you to have 12 months of income so you start every month off in the positive, okay? The high ticket offer is not really, I mean, it's recurrent income for a few months, right? But that's, you have to keep going and getting those clients. Um, so that's why we want you to have both, okay? Cool, Ashley, that makes sense. Awesome. Okay, let me go down um, what I want to cover on this training, and then I'm going to answer every question. I think a lot of what I'm going to talk about right now anyway is going to answer a lot of the questions that you guys put in the group. Um, but I have some specific questions from you guys that I wrote down. I want to make sure I answer those, okay, specifically. So the first thing I want to talk about um, that you guys were asking that I think is perfect for you to understand is, what makes an offer super sellable, right? So I talk about sellable offers, your sellable high ticket offer, your high ticket offer that is super sellable. Well, what does that mean? What does that look like? So here's the first thing. The first thing is that your, your high ticket offer should really be focused on a solution. So I don't think that it's necessary to say, I'm gonna, you know, when you come into this program or this high ticket offer, your one-on-one, -on -one, whatever it is, we're gonna solve four, five, six, seven, ten different problems. I think that that's gonna get hard to market, it's gonna get hard to sell, it's gonna be hard to talk about, but it's also gonna be hard for your potential clients to wrap their head around. Just keep in mind that people are really busy, people don't have a lot of time, and just like you, they want a quick result. They want things to happen quickly. So you wanna make your, your high ticket offer really, really easy to say yes to. And the best way to do that is make it focused on one solution. Like, I'm going to help you reach A, or I'm going to help you accomplish X, right? Like, I don't think it's necessary to go down the whole list of everything that you're going to do with them or all the things that you could help them with in the forefront of your marketing because it makes it really complex, right? Um, in fact, I kind of teach doing this even in your lower ticket offers is just keep it really simple. So I want you to make it really easy to say yes to. And a few ways that you can do that is you don't need to go into the logistics of the offer, okay? Um, you don't need to talk about the features. They don't really care about those. As much as you think, oh, that might help them buy, that might help them make a decision, they might want to know this. I want you to um, understand that if people have questions, they will ask you or um, you can talk about the features, you can talk about the logistics of the offer after you've sold them. So one of the things that I do, just to put this into perspective for you guys, um, one of the things, I'm sorry if there's any noise, they're, um, my maintenance guys are out here doing the lawn right now, um, they always pick the best time. Okay, so one of the things that I do to make sure that I'm keeping things really simple, I'm gonna give you an example right now. When I talk about, let's say my 12 month um, recurrent group program, right, which is the Profitable Entrepreneur, when I talk about that program, there's a lot of things that you guys get inside there. There's a lot of things I'm going to do with you guys. There's a lot of things that I help my clients with across the board. But from a selling standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, it's too much to try to cover all that. It's too much to talk about all that. And I think that a lot of my potential clients would feel very overwhelmed and confused if I actually covered right so the way to keep it really simple is I focus on the key things that I know are the most valuable that my ideal clients are going to want more than anything like the things that's going to get them to buy so I might say something like listen when you join the profitable entrepreneur it's a 12-month program it's a live program when you join the program you're going to get weekly live tutor sessions with me every single week right in the Facebook group we're going to meet you're going to jump in, you're going to ask your question, you're going to share your offer, you're going to share your question, your struggle, your sales page, your offer, your prices, your copy, whatever you want my feedback on. You're going to pop into that little session, you're going to get your, your help, get your support, get your coaching, and you're going to get out and get back to work. Um, every single week, we're going to hop on a coaching training call. We're going to focus on one sales or marketing strategy, and we're going to help you master it, help make it unique for your business, and you're going to go off and you're going to implement that. And then every week inside the Facebook group, we're going to be jumping in there to keep you accountable, keep you focused. You're going to have accountability every day, every week inside the group. 
And then, of course, you get access to our membership portal where you get, um, I feel like, um, you're going to get access to the membership portal where then you can have, um, you know, you can get access to our courses and our trainings and other things like that, right? That's how I would sell it. I wouldn't probably say, listen, we have experts. You're going to get training on this, training on this, training on this. And I wouldn't really focus on the content. I wouldn't focus on the training. I'm going to focus on the live access to me because that's what's going to peak people's interest and really get them ready to buy because it's access to me. Your time is your most valuable asset. So anytime that you are going to be giving people access to you or time with you, that's the stuff you want to hype up. That is what you want to lead with. That's what you want to focus on. The courses you're going to give them, the PDFs, the modules, um, you know, the access to, hi Valerie, good morning, the access to, you know, your portal, your training, like that is features. That's not actually what they're paying for, right? And that's not the stuff that's going to get them really excited and, and help them see that what you're doing is really valuable, okay? So I want you to not go into all the logistics don't make it hard for people to buy. If you make it really hard for them to wrap their head around, then they're going to be confused, they're going to feel overwhelmed, and they're not going to be sure, which is going to mean they won't buy, okay? Don't overstuff your offer. A lot of people come to me and say, Ann, I've give, I'm giving them all my courses. I'm giving them all the trainings I've ever created. I'm going to help them do everything I've learned in the past 40 years. Like, literally, you're overstuffing. I'm going to give them all these bonuses. What happens again is it feels like too much. People feel like, God, this is going to take a long time to go through. I'm going to have to like, you know, schedule out hours every day to just go through your trainings. Like, how am I going to get results with this? And how long is this going to take? And it just, do I need all of that? It feels really overwhelming, right? So that is another thing is I just want you guys, I don't want you to focus on overstuffing your packages, okay? Um, you don't need to put a lot in it for it to be sellable. And just because it's a high ticket offer doesn't mean that it has more stuff. In fact, a high ticket offer typically is less stuff and it's more access to you. I want you to really keep that in mind. A high ticket offer is more access to you and it's less stuff. Okay. Um, here's the other thing. I don't want you guys to use clever language. I see a lot of you guys, you know, as I check out your pages and as Amy and I, my assistant, Kind of just check you guys out to see what you guys are doing. Um, I see a lot of people trying to use clever marketing language. Um, you don't need to be a marketer, okay? You don't need to be a marketer. You don't need to have all the right words. You don't need to say all the right things. There is no special formula for what you need to be saying or exactly what words you need to use. Um, I want you to just be more who you are, and I want you to focus more on, um, you know, speaking from a place that's just... Sorry guys, I had to pause. I had to pause that. The maintenance guys are out, so my alarm system keeps going off. Good morning, Denitra. All right. So I just want to say, I don't want you guys to feel like you need to be these clever marketers who have this really, you know, clever language. You use these markety type words. I want you to be just more who you are and speak from what's true to you. Speak the way that you want to be speaking in your marketing, okay? Um, this is going to make things just easier for you in general when it comes to talking about your offer. If you feel like you need to be a marketer who's been in business for 30 years and you got to say all the right things, you're never going to get your content out there. You're never going to get your sales conversations happening because you're going to be so focused on, am I saying it right? Am I doing it right? Do I sound professional? Do I sound like I know what I'm talking about? And you're going to overthink it so much that it's just going to make it so you never get your stuff out there, okay? The other thing, too, that I want to add with this is to make it really easy for people to say yes to, keep the pricing simple, okay? So here's what I do. Listen, for, for the profitable entrepreneur, you make 12 payments of $450 a month. Done. It's that simple. Or they can pay in full. Done, right? If you start getting complicated, I see some of you guys, you're like, oh, we have two and three and four different payment plan options, and you can pay in full, and if you pay in full, it's this much, and... You know, you start getting, con you know, kind of like all over the place and you're trying so hard to get people to say yes that they're like, wait, just give me a freaking price. Keep it simple. Make it easy, right? Um, and so that's what I want you guys to be thinking about is just like give them a price, give a pay plan, make it simple, okay? That's what I want you to do. 
Okay, um, another thing with your offer, if you can, and you, you can, but you gotta sit and think about it for a minute, I want you to make it step by step, okay? What I mean by this is that when you have a, a offer, whether it is a high ticket or low ticket, I want you to think specifically, what steps do I need to take with this client to get them from where they are to the place that I'm saying my offer will help them get to, okay? So what I want you to do is kind of sit and think about, well, what steps did I take? And what I want you to do is flush this out. I don't want you to overthink it. This should not take you very long, but I want you to think about what are these steps that we absolutely must take, the things we absolutely have to focus on, and then everything else I want you to take out of the steps, and I want you to make those things like bonuses or worksheets or homework or things they can do in their free time. Okay, everything that you think a client needs to do to get from A to B doesn't necessarily need to be your offer. It doesn't necessarily be everything you do in your offer. I want you to tailor and customize things a little bit. You have a step-by-step -step system. It's like a framework. And then there might be things that you might do a little differently with a client or that you might help them with or that you might give them for homework. It's not absolutely necessary in order to get the result, but it could be helpful because this is gonna simplify your offer. It's gonna make it easier to talk about, and it's gonna, again, make it easy for the buyer to wrap their head around. If you give them 50 steps, they're gonna feel like they can never achieve that, meaning they're never gonna get results with your program or with your services because they don't even have the time to do all the steps, okay? So I want you to keep it really simple. I typically tell my clients, um, we're gonna focus on three things. I usually, three is kind of my sweet spot. When I'm selling something, I usually say, here's the top three things we're gonna work on. And I'll give it in a bullet list. Step one, step two, step three. If there's anything else that comes up along the way, we'll tackle it. But these are the main three things that we're gonna focus on in this time together. And that helps them say, wow, not only is it so simple, one, two, three, but like you broke it down, one, two, and three. It keeps it really easy for them. And I actually say, first thing, step number one, this is what we're gonna do. Step number two, we're gonna focus on this, and step number three, this. And it breaks it down. It's so easy for them to wrap their head around, okay? So that's what I want you to kind of do, is break it down into like three, no more than maybe four to five steps, simple. And don't go into storytelling. Oh, we're gonna do your messaging, and we're gonna make sure this, and make sure that, and we'll add this. Don't do that. Just say, we're gonna nail and hone in on your messaging so that when you're putting content out, people are actually engaging with it and it's, it's converting, done. Move on to step number two. Simple, 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 so they can wrap their head around it, okay? Um, okay, so triggers that get people to buy. Um, triggers that get people to buy, um, let's see, we have that you're selling exactly what they want. I don't want you to sell what you think people want. I want you to go ask people, what do you want? Okay, I want you to go ask them and then sell that. If it's your zone of genius, okay? So here's what you're gonna do in your messaging, in your market research, in your you know social selling. When you're asking people what they want, you're gonna focus it around what you do. So I'm not gonna go ask people, hey, what do you guys wanna know about Facebook ads? Because that's not what I do. I might say, hey guys, what do you wanna know about direct messaging um, on social media? Hey guys, what do you wanna know about your high ticket, about creating a high ticket offer that sells out? Hey guys, what do you want to know about creating messaging that converts? I might ask, I'm going to ask questions to my people around the thing that I do, around the thing that I specialize in. And then whatever they tell me they want, you go create an offer around that. Go create a free piece of training. And then from that training, you can extend an invitation, right? That's how you're going to kind of organize that. So I want you to be thinking about what do they want in a way of like, what did they say they wanted? Okay, not what you think that they want, because that might not be what they want. Um, the other thing is you've got to have this know, like, and trust. Now, one of the things I teach in The Profitable Entrepreneur is um, we teach a lot about social selling. So, like, direct messaging, um, private messaging, whatever you guys want to call it, um, across the platform, social platforms that we use. Okay, we have templates for this. We have a way that we do it. We have kind of a system that we're following. Um, this is a way for us to instantly create no like and trust the second someone comes into our community. The very second someone connects with us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, our Facebook group, 
um, any of our social platforms, our personal page, anything like that, we have a system we follow that instantly gets us engaging, communicating, we have them taking action, and we're already building rapport and know, like, and trust. Here's the thing. Social posts and emails are not enough to do that because everyone's getting bombarded with so much of this that they're not really paying attention to most of it. So the way that you're going to stand out is by creating that know, like, and trust getting out there and manufacturing it, okay? That's something we teach very heavily, actually, um, in The Profitable Entrepreneur, which is what we call social selling. It's about being able to sell on social media, leverage social media to maximize your sales without actually being salesy at all, okay? Um, and this actually has cut our work week down quite a bit, believe it or not. Okay, so that's one thing. The other thing is give people some access to you. One thing that is a trigger right now is access, and here's why. Probably 90% of coaches and leaders in this industry right now are automating everything. In order for you to get access to them, it's nearly impossible, right? Or it's a fraction. It's this tiny little, like, you get a quick second with me every week in a group with, like, 300 other people. You'll be lucky if you get your question answered, right? Um, it's very, very difficult to get access to a leader in this industry today. When you sign up for the program, it's all automated. It's social bots. It's... Um, you know, it's automated emails, it's automated scheduled social posts, it's a quick little ask a question really quick and that's it, that's all you get, right? Um, or you're having to pay 20, 30, 40, 50,000 to get a couple of quick sessions a month with somebody. So access, your time, like I said, is your most valuable asset, right? When people can have some access to you, um, I'm telling you right now, that's a huge selling trigger. If people can get access to you, they're going to take that over your little modules and your trainings and your membership all day because it's very hard to get that because everybody is trying to automate. They're trying to take themselves out of their business. They're trying to communicate less with their people, have less interaction, less time that they need to be connecting with people and more automation. And unfortunately, that's becoming very sour very, very quickly in this industry, which is why we opened up the Profitable Entrepreneur where we teach you social selling because it's going to create sustainability in your business where there are some places that you should automate and there are some things to automate. But when it comes to the forefront of selling, people love access to you because practically nobody's doing that anymore, right? And I announced too, like in my Unleash program, in the Profitable Entrepreneur program, um, which are going to be coming one, that's going to be one program. But in that program, over that 12 months, we are live in the Facebook group two to three times a week where we're literally just coaching, answering questions, reviewing your stuff. We're doing the uncommon very, very well. We are doing what nobody else is, is willing to do, right? And then before that, we're in the DMs. We're direct messaging. We're private messaging with every single person that comes into our online community. Between Amy and I right now, and we're getting ready to hire another social media sales marketing person to come in and help with, with this um, because our traffic is already growing like crazy. Um, and, and Ashley, actually, you've been doing this, and you're seeing major engagement happening, right? This is what we're teaching on an advanced level inside the, the Profitable Entrepreneur because people, you're building that rapport right out of the gate, which gets them wanting to get in your group. And then they want to join your lives. And then they want to open your emails. They want to be part of what you're doing. They want to learn from you and buy from you because the second they came into your community, they already got to know, like, and trust you. You already built rapport. And you, you're doing what practically nobody else out there is doing right now. Okay, so these are some triggers just to give you guys a little bit of a heads up on that. Okay, all right, number two. So that was a lot on number one. But here's the second thing for your sellable offer, the high ticket pricing. So, okay, a high ticket offer in, in, our, in the Sell Like a Rebel community is $2,000 or more, but typically I like to see you higher than that. Um, I really say like no less than $2,500 should be a high ticket offer, but we like to see even more than that. But here's the thing, um, it's not going to be, it's not about how much you're giving them. Remember I mentioned before, like, just because it's a high ticket offer and it's a bigger investment does not mean you give them more. You give them less, but you give them more access to you, okay? Remember, your high ticket offer is for a high level client. That means that high level client does not need you every second. They're not as needy. Um, they don't need as much hand holding. They don't need as much guidance. 
a high level client's gonna come in, ask a question, get support, get coaching, and get out. They're working with clients, they're busy. They don't have time to be sitting on coaching session or on boxers with you all the time asking you all these questions and how do I do this and where do I do that and what about this and what about that and how do I how do I find a client? A high level offer is not for those types of clients, okay? You you can create your recurring low ticket um, program or offer. Uh, good morning, Bonnie. You can re you can create that low ticket offer for those types of clients. So here's an example. Inside the Profitable Entrepreneur, the 12 month program, right? Which by the way, we are launching right now at a beta price of 450 a month, and you get two to three times a week coaching with me uh, in the private Facebook group. It's insane. I've never seen anything like it. But here's the thing. Good morning, Cameron. Um, here's how this works, okay? What you'll do, what you'll do is you're going to prime probably the majority of your audience. You're going to probably prime them for your low ticket offer, that recurring six to twelve month program. I really recommend twelve months. Um, you're going to prime them for that. The majority of your audience will start there, and that's where they're going to build the foundation. That's where they're going to get themselves to a place where they're ready to be a high level client. Okay. And then your high ticket offer that we're talking about today, which is definitely $2,000 or more, I recommend more. Um, that offer is going to be for the people that are at an advanced level. They don't need your every second. They don't need hand-holding. They're not super needy. They don't need a lot of attention. They're looking more for like accountability. They're looking to be like, hey, I have a question. What's your answer to this? How can you help me? What do you think about this? And then they're working with their clients and they're often doing their thing. So when client people come into my community, myself and Amy, my team, we are direct messaging. We're creating no like and trust and report the single second that they join our community. We are engaging and making it happen. From that place, we are asking them questions that let us know who they are and what level of business, what stage of business they're at. Do they belong in our Facebook group? We are super, super picky with that these days. If they don't answer the three questions, they're not getting in the group. And if their answers to the three questions are not what we want them to be, they're not coming in the group, okay? If we're getting Facebook friend requests, it has to meet my profile, my requirements, or we're not connecting. We're getting really picky about this, okay? Um, we're working really, really hard on this because we want to have an audience of buyers. And so we're getting really picky with this, okay? And what we're doing is as we're having these conversations, we're learning who they are, what they do, and what stage of business they're at. And that gives us an indication. Are they a good fit for the profitable entrepreneur or are they a better fit for one-on-one -on -one coaching with me? right which is for those higher level advanced clients that are you know already working with clients they're already making money in their business they already have a working system and structure they're just ready to scale to the next level okay so those clients get moved into one-on-one -on -one, where the newer people that are like well i'm still trying to figure some stuff out i am making a little bit of money it's not consistent I probably don't have the systems and the structure in place. I probably don't know how to leverage social media and Facebook groups and things like that. We put those people into the profitable entrepreneur because by the end of it, they're at a high level where they're ready to come into one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I want you to think about a client journey. I want you to think about who is a good fit for your low ticket and who's a good fit for your high ticket offer. The high ticket offer won't be for everybody. And in fact, I don't recommend you put people in there that aren't an absolute fit, okay? There's ways through social selling that you identify this, okay? So that's the thing on um, pricing. And I do want to say um, people are really buying the outcome. They're not buying, you know, the modules. They're not buying the sessions. They're not buying all the bonuses. You know what I mean? They're really buying the outcome. They're coming and they're joining because they want to get that specific outcome, rather it's to lose weight, be a better parent, be more productive in their business, um, be healthier, make better food choices, um, you know, whatever it might be. The thing that they're buying is that outcome, right? So I want you to focus more on your benefits. I want you to focus more on talking about, selling, and leading with um, the outcome, okay? And yes, like Ashley said, the experience and the outcome, that's really all they're buying, right? When people join me in the Profitable Entrepreneur, they're not buying the modules. They're not buying my courses. They're not even buying the bonuses. They're really buying 
the outcome that they're going to get, that they're going to have a social selling proven system in place that is going to create recurrent income, recurrent clients, super high engagement, so they can grow their business, hit their money goals, and they can start to, you know, um, hire a team or go on vacation or pay off debt or spend more time with family, whatever that is. That's the stuff they're buying. So when I'm talking about, hey, you're going to be able to get coaching from me two, three times a week, right? Um, they're thinking, oh, great, this is perfect. I'll have accountability to keep me on track and focused so I hit my goals. I'm going to have coaching. That way I can ask my questions and keep implementing to get the results. I'm going to have a social selling system so I know exactly how to use my time and sell on social media. These are the things, right, so that they can do this. So keep that in mind. And another trigger, guys, that I want to share is a quick win. If you guys can give a quick win, that is going to be a trigger to get people to buy more often, okay? So what a quick win might look like is an extra coaching session with you, or um, I usually give a mini VIP day. I'll say, hey, listen, when you buy today, you'll get a two-hour mini VIP day with me privately. We will plan out how we're going to spend our time together, or we'll work on your biggest single challenge that you're having right now. We'll get it out of the way. I usually offer that little mini VIP day because it's like a no-brainer, right? They're going to get that quick win. The other thing that we might offer as quick wins is we might say, listen, we're going to do a cash injection campaign. So I'm going to give you access to my cash injection campaign where my clients have done thousands and thousands of dollars in days and weeks. Um, you're going to get access to that. I'm going to help you personalize it and tailor it so that you can earn your investment back for the program. Um, you have that possibility, that opportunity to do that. That's another quick win. Um, so it could be extra session with you. It could be a VIP, little mini kickoff with you. It could be an orientation call. We do that also. We'll do some orientation calls. Um, it could be an expert training. So maybe you're going to have someone come in and help around, uh, do like a session around mindset. So maybe they get like a mindset session where they can break through some of the money blocks before things actually kick off in your program. So I want you to think of like a quick win. The quick win should not be homework. It should not be more work added to their plate. It should be something that gives them an instant result. Make sense? Let me know in the comments if you guys understand that. Okay, let's talk about the structure of a high ticket offer. Um, again, we want to keep this really, 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 really simple. Um, the structure should be step by step, right? Really, really focused on a step by step um, type of system that's going to get them, as long as they show up, it's going to get them from A to B, right? They, the client needs to show up, obviously, and do the work. But your job is to identify the structure. What is it going to take step by step to get this client from point A to point B? What do we need to do? What do we need to focus on? What do we need to create? What do we need to change? What are those things? Keeping it really simple, focused on the absolute things. Everything else can be a bonus or extra, okay? Um, in terms of um, the length of the, the high ticket offer, this depends. You have to think about what is it going to take? How long, how much time do I need with a client to get them from point A to point B? So here's what we do. In our high ticket offer, my one-on-one -on -one coaching, it's four months. Four months is enough time for me to help someone who's already doing four or five figures consistently a month. I can help them get to multiple five figures or even six figures in a four-month time frame because they're already working with clients. They already have their offers. Um, they're already marketing, they're already doing stuff. Like they have an established business. They're not starting from scratch, right? So because they're coming to me and they already have an established business, they have things in place that already work. We don't have to start from scratch. So what we're doing is in four months, we're taking what they're doing that's already working and I'm gonna help them amplify it. I'm gonna help them make it work better. I'm gonna help them scale it. So essentially they're gonna take what's already working we're going to lower the time and effort they actually have to put in, but we're going to maximize the results and get them even bigger, faster, more results, right? That's what we do. So clients coming into that high level, we only need about four months with them. And, you know, if we're talking to someone and we feel like they kind of don't have everything in place, that's where that mini VIP could come in, in handy. That's where you could say, look, we're going to do a mini VIP. We're going to work on this. We're going to get a few things in place so that we can really get you where we want to get you during that four months of time together. Make sense? So this is where you can kind of weasel that in a little bit and work that in there a little bit. So this structure really depends on how much time you think you need with someone 
you know, given time to go back and forth. They need to digest the information. You guys got a coach. There's the pre-work. There's after coming back and forth for tweaks and edits. You really need to give yourself time. I like to see my clients do four to six months minimum where you're given time in between so that you don't feel rushed and your client does not feel like, oh my God, I got to hurry up and get these results because we only have a month left. Okay, so I want you to really think about that in terms of the structure. Now you can do for a high ticket, you can do a master, a group mastermind. Um, that's really leverageable and scalable. You could do a group mastermind. You could do um, one-on-one coaching package. So if you're a service base and you're doing like web design or copywriting or VA, social media, come up with a package retainer. You spend that amount of time together and you really put in your proposal you outline this is what we're focusing on, right? These are the things we're gonna help you do and, and we're gonna help you work on inside this package. And they pay you X dollars every month for those deliverables, okay? Um, so that's the way to do that. Um, but you can do like a, a VIP day or a half a VIP day. That's still a high level, but it's a one-off. There's nothing recurrent about that. So um, I just want you guys to keep that in mind, okay? Um, so that's that question. Okay, the next thing, um, here's some elements. I wanted to share a few elements with you that I just think these are the things that really help my offers sell out really easy, very quickly. Um, and I think that these would be a great win for you guys. So number one, that quick win we talked about. Um, this is really a non-negotiable. This is going to be that thing that sets them over the edge, right? It's going to put them over the edge and make them be like, oh my God, this is a no-brainer. Um, so a quick win that's very action packed and very solution focused. I don't want you to give them a quick win where it's homework or it's more things they have to do or it's time they have to add into their already busy schedule. The whole point of the quick win is that they're going to get a quick win. They're going to get a result or an outcome or a breakthrough right away before the program even begins. Um, so I really think for me, it's time with you and or time with you and your team. I think access, again, I'll just, I'm going to keep going back to this, but I just think that access to you and or your team um, is going to be the icing on the cake for them, okay, more than probably anything else. Just because your time is your most valuable asset and there's not enough people given that these days, okay? So like I said, I typically will do like a, um, like a little VIP day with them or we'll do like a breakthrough session with them or you know, we'll do um, like a, a, um, a cash injection with them, but we'll come in and help them so we, they get access to us, we guide them along the way. Again, that access to you is going to be really, really critical, okay? Um, I think that's always gonna be a really fantastic win, all right? Um, okay, another thing to um, a quick win could be review or feedback of something. So we sometimes will do a social media audit uh, sometimes we'll do a sales page review feedback. Sometimes we'll do their sales conversation so they can send us some recordings. Um, they can send us some recordings of re uh, sales conversations they've had and we can give personal feedback on them. These are another, these are some more quick wins that you could be doing. Obviously tailor them to what you offer and provide, but these are another great, great way to be providing those quick wins for people, okay? Just make sure it is something that's actually going to help them move forward in the thing that you guys are doing together, okay? So it has to be congruent. It has to make sense. Um, so I've done things like a sales assessment or a social media audit, a sales conversation audit, feedback. Um, I've done mini VIPs. I have done cash injections. I've done extra sessions or Voxer or extra time with me. Again, access. Um, these are all some of the things that are really, really good quick wins, and you can also call them bonuses, that are going to really get people on board. These are triggers that are going to get people like, oh my God, this is like, you know, a no-brainer, I'm in. Um, and, and remember, anything that's going to help them implement quicker, anything that's going to help them get a result quickly in your program, um, it's not about just giving them stuff. They don't care about that. They want results. They want outcomes. Okay, um, you could do live orientation calls. We've done those in our programs where we do, we hop on video, we do a live orientation, we kick things off, we get people excited, we get them ready. This is another great thing. We've done laser quick sessions, things like that, okay? All right, um, here's a question you guys had. When you build, Ashley said, I have to go get ready for my training group. I'll be about to catch the rest of the replay. Awesome, Ashley, yes, come back and finish. 
Um, okay, when you've built an audience that doesn't want to invest in a high ticket offer. I had several of you ask this question where you said, I feel like my audience doesn't want to invest or they won't invest in a high ticket offer or they don't have the money or I'm getting a lot of money objections, right? So here's the thing. How are we doing this? So here's the first thing. How do you know that they won't invest in a high ticket offer? Because have they said that? Or is that like the objection you're getting? Is that just your assumption based on that you put a high ticket offer out and nobody bought it? Um, that's the first thing I think is really important is to actually assess why do you feel like people won't buy a high ticket offer? Because typically it's not about the price point, okay? So that is something I really want you guys to be thinking about. Typically, the price point does not have to do with people buying or not buying. I don't believe that's true at all. Um, I have people that are brand spanking new entrepreneurs that don't have any money in their business yet, and they make investments in my programs, $5,000 and more. So I don't believe it's about the money. I think that it comes down to the way you're positioning it. Maybe it comes down to the way that you're talking about it. Maybe it comes down to the offer not being the right thing for the right for the people that you're putting it in front of. Um, it could be your confidence, your belief system around what you're putting out there. There's so many different variables that are going to dictate if the people in your community are going to buy or not. A lot of the times it's your messaging, it is your positioning, and sometimes it can be your target market. Sometimes it can be that you just have not built up any know, like, and trust yet. So you're trying to sell too soon, okay? Um, if they, if you are putting a solution in front of people that they really need and want, they're going to buy. They're going to find a way to make it happen. Um, they're definitely not just going to come back and be like, oh, I, I can't make that investment. They're going to be like, oh, my God, I want to do this so bad. I need to find the money. That gives you an idea that these are people that are probably ideal buyers. But if people are just like, yeah, I don't have the money for that. No, I can't make that investment. Yeah, I don't make enough money to do that. Yeah, that's too much. That sort of thing, it's probably not the right audience. Um, you might have to change your target market, but it could be a messaging thing. It could be the way you're positioning your offer. People don't see it as a solution, or maybe they don't understand exactly what you're offering. This also comes back to you not being consistent, right? So maybe you're kind of like this week you're offering this offer, next week you're doing something totally different, one week you're a health coach, the next week you do Facebook ads, if, if you know, one week you're here and then the next week you're gone and nobody sees you, nobody hears from you. If there's this lack of consistency, if there's this lack of like um, staying consistent, hi Francisca, showing up and really being, um, you know, really being like consistent with your community, not just in showing up, but showing up, your offer, your message, your positioning. If you're not consistent with those things, people get confused. A confused mind is not going to buy from you. So in order for you to create buyers, you have to be consistent. You've got to build trust. People need to know exactly who you are, exactly what you do, exactly how you can help them. And if you're switching it up all the time or if you're being really inconsistent with showing up, your offer, your, your positioning, you know, those sorts of things, your talking points, then people are just going to get confused. And they're going to be like, I don't really know what you do. Or I'm not sure how you can specifically help me, right? Like, I don't know because it seems like you do a lot of things and I don't feel like I need all that, so I'm kind of confused. And then they're not going to buy, okay? So there's those consistency pieces that I think are deal breakers. And those do play a huge part in people giving you money objections. Money objection, objections is not usually just about the money. And sometimes it's never about the price. It's a money objection because they don't see the value because you aren't positioning it properly, okay? So that is one thing. Um, okay, so positioning, we talked about that. Um, you could be trying to sell too soon, and I think that that's a really big issue in this industry is everyone is like sell, 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 sell. And you're selling to people that you don't know and that don't know you and you don't know what their problem is and they don't know if you offer a solution. They don't know if you're the coach for them or the person that can help them. And we're trying to sell way too soon. This is a big, big no-no because people are getting blasted with promotion. They're so sick of trying to be sold to. They want solutions, but they want it from people they know, like, and trust. Okay, so if you're not doing the social selling and you're trying to just sell first, you're probably going to get a lot of money objections. And that's not going to change. Um, if anything, that's going to continue to increase in this industry, just with the way that it's going, the direction it's going. Um, people want human connection more than anything. 
I've never had so many people buy from us in such a short amount of time with such little effort as what we've been seeing with our social selling strategies versus when we were just putting out promotional posts, promotional emails, promotional lives. That stuff does not barely work anymore. Nobody cares. Um, okay. If you're putting that stuff out, but nobody's paying attention and nobody's seeing it, right? So what's the point? Let's do a quick recap. And then I want to answer some of the specific questions that you guys put in the Facebook group if I haven't answered them already. So if you have any additional questions to what I've added um, here, go ahead and drop them below, especially my replayers. But I'm going to answer some specific questions that you guys put in the um, Facebook group as well. But let me just give a re recap on a high ticket offer. So number one, um, I want you to keep it simple. I want you to be super short, specific, step by step, and just focus on like one outcome. Focus on like one little thing that you're gonna help them do. It doesn't need to be everything. Remember, we're creating a client journey. They gotta start here, and then come here, and then come here, and then come here, and they're gonna work their way up, okay? Um, number two, price it based on what you think the value is of the outcome you're helping them get to, okay? So if you're helping them lose weight, what's the value of that? If you're helping them enhance their health so they can have a better life, what is the value of that? What do you think that's worth? Um, I want you to price based on what you feel confident in, what you feel good about, and what you think the value of the outcome you're helping them accomplish is worth, okay? Um, and start where you're at. Get behind what you can get behind. Get behind what you feel good for now. And then as you work with clients and they give you testimonials and they get results and you really um, perfect your system and your process, you can increase your prices, Okay. Um, okay, the third thing is step by step. So don't give them everything in the kitchen sink. I want you to just be thinking about only what they need to get the result. And then anything else can be additional stuff. Bonuses, homework, things they can do in their own time. Don't overstuff just because you think the more you put in your offer, the more they're going to buy. A high ticket offer is access to you and less stuff. More access to you, less stuff. I can't express that enough, okay? And then give them a quick win. Think of a quick win you can throw in there that's just going to make this really easy to say yes to. That's going to make it really simple for your people to wrap their head around. That's going to amplify what you're going to be doing together. That's going to get them that quick win, that quick result before the program even kicks off or before your first session or whatever that looks like. Okay. All right. I want to go into the questions. Um, let me just peek over here really quickly, but let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, I'm just going to peek really quick here and see if anybody put any new questions in. Um, okay. All right, cool. So let me go over here real quick. All right. Lisa B. Lisa B said, what is hot right now that attracts people to a high ticket offer? Um, I'm going to give you three really quick things, Lisa. Access to you, you and or your team. Definitely access. Simple. It's got to be simple. It's got to sound so easy for them um, that they're like, wow, okay, that's simple. Let's do it, right? Don't make it 50 steps. Don't make it confusing. Don't go into writing a novel and a book. Keep it really simple so people can literally look at your offer or hear you say, here's what my offer is, and be like, boom, that, that sounds simple. I need that. Um, and a quick win. You've got to give the quick win. So access to you, super simple. The way you make it simple is step by step. Only give them what they need. Everything else can be extra. Um, keep it really, really simple, okay? That is what's going to make your high ticket offer really, really sellable. But here's the kicker. You've got to build the know, like, and trust. You've got to build the rapport, okay? You have to do that. They're not going to buy from you if they don't know, like, and trust you. If you haven't built up some connection, some engagement, you got to give some value first. We teach this in the Profitable Entrepreneur. We teach you our social selling system. Part of that is your live content. It's about your direct messaging. It's about building know, like, and trust, creating rapport the second they join you, right? Um, those are the things you need to be looking at. Okay, Lisa B. also asks, how to promise deliverables in a confident way for a high ticket offer? Um, here's the thing. You've got to really be behind your offer. If you're going to go ahead and say, hey, I'm going to help you do ABC, you better believe that you can help them do ABC, okay? Never, ever tell people you're going to help them do something you don't totally back up, that you don't totally feel confident in, or that even if you have the ounce of, like, doubt that you're going to be able to do that, then don't offer that. 
You've got to be behind your offer. You've got to be behind the outcomes that you're saying you're going to help them get to. You've got to be behind the price point. You've got to be behind the structure. You've got to be behind the type of clients that you're attracting into this offer. If any of these things are out of alignment for you, you're going to have doubt when you're talking about it. You're going to have um, doubt and resistance around promoting it, marketing it, and selling it. And then so are your potential clients. You've got to be confident. You've got to be behind it all, okay? you got to feel good about the price. you got to feel good about the structure, okay? So don't structure it in a way where you're like, oh, I have to spend all this time with them or, you know, oh my God, I only have a two weeks to do it. Be behind the structure. Be behind the outcomes. Don't tell people you're going to help them do something if you're not so in love and confident with helping people do that, okay? That's what's going to help it. Um, and I also want you to focus on, instead of really promising, because we can't really promise anybody anything, right? We can't really promise people, oh, you're going to get this result. You're going to be able to do this. What I like to call it is paint the picture of possibility. So basically you're saying, hey, based on my results, based on the results my clients have had, this is what's possible for you. These are the outcomes that are possible for you when we work together and when you full, you go full in, you play all the way, you come in with both feet and you're all in and you show up and do the work, this is what's possible for you. We're not promising jack shit because we can't technically do that. Um, be, because it's not up to you as the coach, as the service provider, you, you can't get the results for your clients. So you can't promise them anything because you can say, hey, all of my clients have got these results and then this this client could come work with you and never show up and do the work and they don't get any results. You can't promise anything other than what you're going to commit to helping them do and show up for them and to do your part. That's it. They need to get their results by showing up and doing the work um, and, and taking advantage of the access to you, right? So instead of promising, we're painting the picture of possibility. Here's what's possible for you when you show up and do the work and we work together based on my results and based on the results that my clients have been getting, okay? Um, okay, Tracy Ann, you asked, how do I price my offer effectively when clients tell you it's lower than they expected? So this is kind of the opposite of what a lot of you guys are experiencing, right? A lot of you are saying that people are giving you objections saying that your price is too much. Well, Tracy Ann has the opposite problem. She has people saying, wow, that's it, that's easy, that's good. Um, so here's the thing. Um, you're not going to price it based on what people can afford or what they say they're willing to pay. I just think that you should price based on what you feel is is the right price. I don't think there's a right or wrong way, right? Um, I think that whatever price you think your offer is worth what or the outcome that you help your clients get to, whatever you feel good about, that's what you should charge. Now, if you feel like you're charging low and people are telling you you're charging low, then maybe it's time to increase your prices, right? Um, but here's the thing. I have the Profitable Entrepreneur, which is a 12-month program. Right now, we're doing a beta price. It's only $4.50 a month, and you get two to three times a week access to me in a Facebook group, on live coaching calls, all live access to me and my team. Like It's insane how much access you get to me um, in that program, right? So again, people are like, wow, it's only $4.50 a month for like, we get access to you live two to three times a week. That's crazy. We get tutor sessions, coaching sessions, sales and marketing trainings. This is fantastic, right? Um, but it's a beta price. It's a price that we feel good about as our first time launching this new program, right? Um, now, if the price is going to go up, it's going to go up every time we launch it, right? But we feel good about that for now. Like as a, hey, it's a founder's rate. Like this is the first time we're launching the program. So we're going to offer it at this price point, but it's never going to be this price point again, ever, right? So that's what I want you to be thinking about is like, it just needs to feel good to you, okay? Um, okay, Tessa asked, how do I offer my package in a way that my people are ready to go for it regardless of the price? Too many people are telling me they can't afford it. So here's that big problem that a lot of you are having. People giving you money objections, saying that they can't afford it. Um, number one, you've got to prime your people first. We just talked about this. They're not going to buy from you. They're going to give you a money objection if they don't know, like, and trust you. If you haven't built any rapport with them. If you haven't been super consistent. If you're not doing the social selling strategies 
and all you're doing is just like putting posts out in your group or putting posts out on your social platform, emailing your list and going live once in a while with pitch, they're not going to buy. It's not nothing anymore. Okay. Um, follow up. So I want you to be following my social selling strategies of direct messaging and outreach and reaching out to people and building rapport and know, like, and trust the second people hit your community. It's non-negotiable, you guys. Gone are the days where you can just put a social post out, send out an email, or go live and sell something. Those days are practically gone because that's all everybody is doing. People want human connection. They're not going to buy from you in those, uh, with those strategies anymore. As you can see, it's working less and less. And people are getting so strict about their Facebook groups because people are constantly spamming and selling and pitching. And it's gone. Nobody cares about that no more. The people that are going to have a sustainable business in five years, 10 years, 20 years from now are the people building relationships with their potential buyers. Those are the people that are going to have a business. Everyone else that's doing social bots and automation and uh, paid traffic and leveraged ads, guess what? Facebook ads will be gone someday. Facebook's going to be gone someday. Social platforms change every single day. Facebook groups come and go. All of these marketing strategies, email these days, email deliverability is at its worst right now. All of this stuff is, is, is absolutely unpredictable and it's not stable. And it, you have no control. It's not going to stick around. But the one thing that will never change is human connection, relationship. So if you focus on building that, you, your people will follow you no matter what changes on social media. Um, they will find a way to stay connected with you. They will buy from you. They will want to be part of your community and you will never ever financially struggle. Okay. This is what we teach you in the profitable entrepreneur. You've got to move into social selling and social selling. The biggest part of that is that human connection piece where you're activating buyers through human connection, through building relationship, through connecting with people. And it's going to make your, your marketing and your content creation so much easier but you're gonna have sustainability for years to come when you focus on building relationships first, okay? Um, so that's my thought on that. Um, I want, again, just be behind everything. If people are saying that they can't afford it, you need to figure out, am I being really consistent? Am I building these relationships? Um, am, I, am I, you know, showing my community, my people that I'm here, they can trust me, they can count on me, they can rely on me, am I giving value? Connecting with them and asking them questions. Do I really know who my people are? Am I learning about them? Are we building that rapport and that connection? Or am I just showing up every day and every week selling shit? Because if that's the case, then yes, you're not positioning properly. People are going to give you a money objection. Okay? Um, so consistency, uh, confidence, community building, and then positioning are going to be really four important factors. All right. Hopefully that answered that question. Okay, Cynthia. Cynthia said, what do I include in my proposal and my sales pages? So I think for your sales pages, I think three to five really sexy benefits or outcomes. I like to do bullet points like I talked about. Like, okay, step one, here's what we're going to do. Step two, step three. You can do like three to five really sexy specific bullet points or outcomes of what they what is possible for them in working together. Um, and then using super rich keywords. Keywords that are their pain points and also their desires. Because the only way to get people to actually read your sales page is that their first headline needs to get their attention. And then the bullet points need to be them raising their hand saying, yep, that's me. Oh my God, this is totally me. In order to keep them reading. Otherwise, they're going to scroll really fast and they're going to miss the important stuff. And then when they, all they're going to see is your offer and they're going to be like, eh, I, I don't know if it's for me. And they're going to exit off the page. Okay. Keep it really short, sweet, to the point keyword rich of their pain points and the outcomes they want, the desires, and then give three to five good, sexy, specific bullet points of what's possible for them, what they stand to accomplish or achieve inside working with you, okay? Um, for the proposals, I think you need to be outlining exactly what they're going to get right down to like, okay, if we're going to do a sales page for you, how many revisions are you offering in this package? I think that, you know, back when I had my VA agency, our proposals basically gave an outline of what we said they were going to get, what we were going to do together, the, the time frame, how, you know, four months, six months, whatever, the price investment options. And then we did a bullet list of here's what you get. Here's the deliverables in this package. 
This package includes ABC, and then we said here's specifically what that looks like. So you don't just tell people, oh, we're going to do a sales page for you, or we're going to build out a website. How many pages are you building? And, and then how many revisions are you doing? Are you doing the graphics? Are you doing the logos? Are you doing all the copywriting? Are you setting up the back end? You have to, you have to be specific um, so that it's very clear and you guys are on the same page of what this package actually includes. And then let them know if they want additional things. It's this much per hour or it's additional this much if you want us to do a third revision or if you want us to create the logo or if you want us to set up the, you know, the cart for payments, whatever it might be. Okay, proposals for that should be super specific. Um, and here's the thing, honestly, what I want to say to you guys for a high ticket offer, you don't need a sales page. I don't care what your niche is. I don't care what you do. You don't need to have a sales page. You can, but you don't need to. You can sell through Messenger. You can sell through Voxer. You can sell through hopping on audio on Facebook. Um, you can hop on audio on LinkedIn. I just did a 15000 I just closed a $15,000 sale last week one message we were just messaging in LinkedIn um, for about maybe 20 minutes and um, we just messaged back and forth and she paid in full $15,000 to come coach with me privately never spoke to her before she never spoke to me we didn't know each other before that conversation but I used my social selling strategy we were direct messaging I reached out to her I started the conversation I moved it into a sales call and a $15,000 sale happened in a 20 or 30 minute call uh, or conversation that was without a sales page that was even without a com like an actual sales call we did it right through messenger okay so again I'm just letting you guys know this is what we teach you this is what you can be doing you don't actually need to have websites and sales pages and all of that conversations for high ticket offers okay um, okay Ashley Gentry you asked should I do a price or should I do a beta price for a high ticket offer totally can um, Here's what we do. If we're doing, if we have an offer that we haven't sold before that's new or that we just want to kind of test the concept of, we could do a beta price. So we could say, hey, it's a founder's rate or a beta's price right now, um, and then the price is going to go up next time or in X days or whatever, okay? Um, you, If it feels good, Ashley or anybody, yes, you can if that feels good to you. Okay, because you want to test the concept, get people buy-in, run people through the program, and then increase the price. Um, so we do a beta price with the Profitable Entrepreneur. We're doing a founder's right right now. It's a beta price of four fifty a month um, for the 12-month program. Okay, so what we do is every launch, um, actually, I'll answer this now, Ashley, because this is your next question. You said, um, when you said that you were going to do your lower ticket offer for the first and sec or second month, and then it was going to be this much, but then a month or two later, you're going to increase the price. Is that for everybody? Here's what we do. This is how we do it. Um, so the Profitable Entrepreneur is a beta price right now. So 12 months at $450 a month, okay? Um, here's what we do. We launch it at that. We show the program. And then what we do is the, pay the sales page goes from $450 a month to $550 a month. Okay, and that will happen on our next launch. So we launch this program about every two months. Um, every couple of months, we're going to launch it. And when we launch it, the price is going to go up by $50 to $100 per month. Okay, and certain bonuses go away. So it's always different. Um, but the price is not going to stay the same, right? That, that happens for, it only goes up for the people that buy later. The people that already bought, they're in for that price. Okay, so everyone that joins now for the 12 months at 450 a month, it's 450 a month for the whole 12 months for you. But when we relaunch it in a couple of months for everybody else, it's going to be 500 or 550 a month to get in. Okay, so that's kind of how we're doing that. Francisca says, is it okay to create a program that can take six or 12 months but focuses more focuses on more problems for them? Example, example, confidence problem, self discipline plan problem etc six or twelve yeah francisco you can do i recommend like at least four to six months for um like a high ticket one-on-one -on -one coaching program i wouldn't do 12 months unless it's like a group mastermind okay but like one-on-one -on -one coaching four to six months is a really good time frame um and and what i would do is you could focus on supporting them with those things, but I wouldn't lead with it just because it's negative. I would lead more with the outcome of how their life is going to transform and change 
when they work on the specific things that they have going on. So it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough to say, oh, this program helps you with your confidence issues, or this program is going to help you be more self-disciplined. That's not going to be specific enough, but absolutely you can do that. Yeah, group mastermind. Yeah, so I would definitely say probably more like 12 months for a group mastermind, but you could do six months to test the concept. Um, remember what we're teaching you in the program, Francisca, because you're in there, is we're going to be teaching you your high ticket offer, but then your 12 month program is going to be your low ticket offer, and that's going to be your recurrent income. One on one coaching isn't necessarily recurrent income, it's active income, right? The recurrent income is going to be leveraged. That will be a group low income, or low income, a low ticket offer uh, for 12 months. That'll be your recurrent income, okay? And that's what's going to help you start off your pos your month in the positive every single month, right? Because you have that money coming in every month for 12 months. So that's what we're going to be creating for you, okay? All right, any other questions? I think I answered everyone. Let me just peek over here. I think I answered everybody's questions um, that you guys put in here and some probably. Um, okay, yep, I think I did. Okay, so if you guys have any other questions, drop them below. I'm going to keep coming back, myself and Amy, my assistant. We're going to keep coming back in and answering any and all questions you guys put in here. So as you join in as a replayer, go ahead and listen through. Drop your questions below, um, and we'll come back and we'll answer them for you. <clears throat> if anybody has questions um, or wants to join or wants to know more about the Profitable Entrepreneur, um, <clears throat> this is our 12-month program then I definitely would recommend drop your question below for that or direct message me. Um, if you direct message me, we can talk about it and see if it's a good fit for you. Um, all right, so I'll see you guys real soon.